very excited, very proud of the win um, over in Richmond. Obviously, this program hasn't done that a lot um, <clears throat> to be able to pull out wins over there. Um, so obviously, that was a that was a good one. Uh, I thought uh, offensively and special teams wise, we played very solid. But defensively, obviously, they stole the show. Um, anytime you can go over there and hold somebody to six points uh, and no touchdowns, especially in this era of college football that we're in today. Um, that's a that's a huge feat, and uh, very proud of those guys. Had uh, you know tremendous individual efforts and tremendous team efforts um, and unit efforts with those guys. Um, offensively, uh, you know, obviously uh, in the first half, it's just hard. Right, we only took 21 snaps in the first half, seven in the first quarter. So um, it's a little hard to establish a rhythm. I thought they did a nice job of um, of uh, just kind of um, playing a gritty game. Um, and gritting it out a little bit until uh, the second half, and we were able to make some things happen, some big plays there. And then special teams, like I said, just a solid performance uh, special teams-wise um, against a very, very good football team. So, um, you know, like we always talk about, did our, did our ice cream social yesterday, had a big time, watched some NFL uh, games, had the families up here and all of that kind of stuff. So that was a lot of fun. Um, got that one out of the way and all the feel goods out of the way, and now – uh, we're focused on uh, our task at hand this week because it's a big one. Uh, got a, a very good uh, Jacksonville State team um, coming in here, one that will be um, uh, probably uh, have a, 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 um, a chip on their shoulder um, because of the, uh, the, the game that they played against SEMO. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, a big crowd and, and all of those things, man, it will be, be a tough task for us this week. So, um, we're not really concerned about all of that. Um, my main concern this week um, is our mindset and making sure that our team um, uh, understands what got them to this point. Because uh, right now they're hearing a lot of 4 and 0 talk and they're hearing a lot of number one in the conference and all of that stuff, all of this stuff um, that's, that's good and they deserve it and it's real because they're very deserving of those things. They put in a lot of work, um, but we've got to make sure that those guys understand uh, why, what got them to this point um, and uh, and make sure that they keep their eyes focused on uh, the work that is at hand because uh, this has got to be a tremendous week of practice for us um, and we've got to play with the hair on the back of our neck standing up this weekend um, and I think that they'll be up for that uh, that challenge. Are you at least a little surprised that you're 4-0 in the league? No, no, I believed, I believed in these kids the whole time. Um, does not surprise me whatsoever. I think the kids believed in themselves the whole time. I believed in them. I believed in what we're doing um, and the preparation that we haven't changed practice yet. We haven't changed the practice schedule yet. We may have tinkered with a time because of travel or something like that. But um, our, our time on the field and our time in those meeting rooms hasn't changed. Doesn't matter about injuries or who's, who's you know, who's uh, limited or who's uh, out for practice or anything like that. We're going to do what we do. We believe wholeheartedly in it. Um, the coaches' staff believes in those kids that they're putting out there on the field, and the kids believe in those coaches, and um, and they believe in one another. And <clears throat> one of the most uh, uh, phenomenal scenes um, when you watch the tape is uh, at the end of the game when we put Sylvon Turner here. You know, Sylvon Turner's a guy who uh, fractured his hand. He's a receiver for us, and he fractured his hand, so he can't play receiver because uh, you're not supposed to catch with one hand. So um, instead of just kind of taking a couple of weeks paid vacation, he decides he wants to go try to play corner because we can wrap that thing up and, and put a club on it and let him go play special teams, play corner. He gets a chance to go in at the end of the game, drives on a ball and almost picks it. And, uh, you know, you want to see a sight that will almost make you cry, man, watch the sideline when that happens um, because uh, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a person that was on the bench um, in that moment. They were, they were super happy for that guy. And uh, if they'll keep doing that and keep playing selflessly, selflessly, um, and good things will continue to happen for them. But uh, we've got to make sure that we focus on those things. Where's the ceiling for this team, and have you come close to it? Don't know. I don't think we've come close to it. I don't think. I mean, I think that's the the most encouraging thing we talked about as a staff yesterday. Is is we still haven't played our best ball, not even close to it. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things we got to fix. Like a lot of things we got to fix. I mean, you know, I mean. Very evident. I mean, we, we put 12 on the field and punt return the other day at the end of the game uh, on a fourth and seven that put them on a fourth and two. They run the offense back out there. That could have been a pivotal pivotal point. I mean, that could have been a big-time play in a close game. 
that's a huge play. Um, now we wound up stopping them. Defense did a tremendous job. Wound up stopping them, and you know, and and uh, you know, the coaches were telling the kids, yeah, we we just wanted better field position um, in that moment. But that's not that's not true at all. You know, those things, those, those type of things get you beat. Um, have the potential to get you beat. So we've got a lot of stuff to clean up. But I think that's also the most encouraging thing about this bunch is is we're still waiting for that. We're still waiting for that great game. With that being said, watching what SEMO did to Jacksonville State this past weekend, they played the perfect game in you know, all three phases. Is that what's going to take from you guys to do the same thing this Saturday? No, I, I, I think that SEMO I think SEMO did their job. You know, I think that, that uh, for us uh, to be successful, I think we have to do our job. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't take superhuman efforts. It doesn't take superhuman strength. You just have to do what you're asked to do. Um, and believe wholeheartedly in how you're being asked to do it um, and be 100% convicted on that. Um, and if you'll do that, you know, and you watch the game, I mean, um, you know, both of those teams are good football teams. Simo's a good football team. It's, they didn't do anything out of the ordinary that, they, that they're not capable of doing. They just played really hard. They were very opportunistic. You know, Jacksonville State turned the ball over, I think, five times, something like that, um, you know, which is very un- um, uh, not like them, uh, you know, for, for a Jacksonville State team. They don't do that. So, um, and SEMO was able to capitalize on those things. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, all we've got to do is focus on what we've got to do um, and the jobs that we're being asked to do and focus on how hard we do those and how much fun uh, we have while doing those things. You talked about what got you here, and I know you and I can pour through stats. We can look at numbers, how good Drew's been, defense opportunistic. How did you get here? What are you telling the kids, the, the team, how did you get to Borno coming into the Saturday? Effort and enthusiasm and believing in what they're doing. Um, you know, it's, it's not a – it's not a – you know, we talked a bunch about um, – you know, we, we have a four-letter word that's banned from this from this building, and, and it's not a cuss word. It's, it's the word hope. Uh, we don't go in there and we say, hey, man, we hope we're going to get this look. We hope that we make this block. We hope that you can do this. We hope that this practice schedule is what we need right now. It's, it's uh, we believe that you can do this. Uh, we believe that you can do this even better. Look at this really good play that you had. I believe so much in you that I think that you even have more than that. Um, and it's and it shows up when a guy like Quincy Williams returns an inter interception for 60 yards, and what is his first response? Man, I should have scored, you know, uh, because he knows that everybody on that sideline and everybody on those headsets believed that there's something left in that tank. There's something more. He could have scored. We believe that. We believe in that moment, man, he could have scored. It's not to take away from the big-time play that he had. It's to show him that we believe even more in you. Um, and that's a tough thing to do. That's a tough, tough thing to do to lay yourself out there like that and believe wholeheartedly in the guys next to you. It's, it's cool to talk about, and it's, you know, and, and it gets thrown around a lot and all of that kind of stuff, but – um, to buy into it wholeheartedly. Um, and and uh, we did a deal, and, and most people who saw it or some of the people who saw it that weren't with us Friday night probably don't know why we did it. Um, we did the hokey pokey after the game um, because there's a part in the hokey pokey. At the end of the hokey pokey dance, what do you do? You put all of yourself in, and you take all of yourself out, and you put all of yourself in, and you, sh you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around, and that's that's what it's all about, and and that's what it's all about is putting all of yourself in, um, not not your left foot, not your right foot, not your left arm, not your right arm, not testing the waters, um, jumping off the high dive into the deep end, no matter how cold or hot that water is, um, and putting all yourself in, and uh, all of those things sound, you know, kooky or coach talk or whatever. Um, but that's, that's what we've done. That's what we've done, and that's what uh, we've got to continue to do. What's the strength of Jacksonville State this year? Did they change from what they did last year in any regard? No, I mean, athleticism is always their strength. You know, they've got tremendous players, play very hard, 
um, uh, tremendously skilled at the skilled position. Um, they have uh, big play potential all over them. They have big play potential at any moment of the game. Um, you know, they, they can turn the game with one return, one big play over the top of you, um, you know, one interception. They're always a play away with that type of athleticism on the field. Um, so they're, you know, um, don't, don't get the idea because of last week. Don't get the idea that this is some different Jacksonville State team or like, ooh, man, they're, they're not as good. They, you know, North Carolina A&T was a, was a top-ranked team. They're a good football team. SEMO is a good football team. Like, when you watch them on tape, there's a lot of wow factor to the way that they play, and they play, uh, they play on their toes, and they play Jacksonville State on their toes. So um, not for one instance, not one ounce of me do I think I'm playing a lesser Jacksonville State team. I just think that uh, SEMO's a really good team. Some of these teams that they've played are really, really good teams. Um, and uh, – and, and that's what's going to make it even tougher for us because Jacksonville State's going to come in here pissed off now. I mean, they make no make, make no mistake about it. They'll come in here with their hair on fire, um, and they'll be ready to play. Simo got 184 yards rushing against Jacksonville State. Uh, does that say more about Jacksonville State's defense or more about Simo's ability to run the ball? Yeah, good question. I think it's more – I mean, I, I think it's um, – you know, watching it on tape, I, I, again, I go back to – um, you know, those two backs that SEMO had running it then, they're, they're good. They're sporty, and they do a lot of good things schematically and, um, and, and did some things to put Jacksonville State in a bind schematically. Um, and, they, and they played really, really hard, you know. And, and uh, again, the same thing. You know, Jacksonville State did some uncharacteristic things. They turned the ball over five times. Jacksonville State doesn't do that. Um, and SEMO was able to capitalize on that. So I think it was just one of those um, – I wouldn't call it perfect storms. It's just – Two good football teams playing one another. Uh, one of them happened to be a, a on and off day, and they turned the ball over, and the other team was able to capitalize on it, and, and that's kind of the result that you get. I know you're always talking about, you know, win the day, want to know, and you don't really look at a lot of big picture things. But given this game on Saturday, is this the most meaningful game that you've been a part of since you've been here at Murray State? Um, it's the most meaningful one to us, just because it's the only one we play this week. We don't get we don't get two games, um, and that's we we call those days a day of celebration for a reason. And we want everything as a staff. We want everything to go perfect on those days because, um, as a football player, you earn those days, man. Because you work an awful lot for not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of time in the sun, so to speak. You know, you get 11 guaranteed opportunities and you work all year round um, and you put a lot of practice effort and things like that. And there's a lot of there's a lot of physical days that don't feel real good and make you uncomfortable uh, just to go into 11 days, um, 11 guaranteed days. And um, so um, we will never, ever, ever take one of those days for granted. That's the reason why we call them a day of celebration, because we want to do just that. We want to celebrate each and every one of them. Um, and the only way to do that is is, um, is to pour your heart into that day. It's, it's hard to be fired up about your birthday if all you're looking forward to is the next year's birthday. It don't work that way, you know. Um, and we want to make sure that, that we pour our heart into every Saturday that we get because once it's done, like on Sundays and Mondays when we come in and we watch the previous game with the team, I don't give those coaches a whole lot of time to do that because at the end of the day, I don't really care because what's done is done. There is no rewind button. You can't go back and play those games again. So you better make the most out of it when you're out there on that football field because once the clock says zero, 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 it's done. It's done. And there's a winner and there's a loser, and that's the fact of the matter. Um, and we want to make sure, like we always talk about, that when we go in that locker room, um, at the end of the day, at the very least, at the very worst, we can say, hey, man, we just laid it all on the line. We, may, we laid it all on the line today. There's nothing left for us to do. Injury update on uh, DJ Pinnock specifically and any other <laughs> DJ Pinnock will be fine. He had a concussion last week, so um, he'll, be, he'll be fine. He'll be back at practice. We'll have to, you know, we'll have to slowly go through the week of practice. Um, again, we're – what week are we in? Eight, I think. I don't know. We're in week one as far as I'm concerned. Um, but we're in that point of the season, so we've got some bumps and bruises. We've got to be careful about what we're doing in the weight room and 
uh, be careful about what we're doing at practice. Um, but at the same time, we have, we have a standard at which we're going to practice, and it's not going to change. Um, you know, we've got some people that um, are being put in some roles. Y'all just saw one, Jared McCray. You know, he was he was uh, he got the Bell South call, so to speak, out of the bull, bullpen, um, and made the most out of his opportunity. And we'll continue to do that um, as needed. But uh, you know, we're okay. Uh, bumps and bruises. We're hurt. We're not injured. So, um, and we got the finest uh, athletic trainer in the country, and uh, he'll he get them bandaged uh, bandaged up and put some icy hot on them. They'd be good to go. Jacksonville State is allowing opponents to convert 24 percent of their third downs on the season. How much will you guys work on that this week? Can you even simulate a defense that's so effective on third down? No, we'll. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll simulate it as much as we do each and every week. We'll emphasize it as much as we do every other week. Um, you know, and when it comes to Tuesday, that's what we're going to work on. Um, is our third downs. When it comes to Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, we'll work on our field zones. So we'll do the same thing that we know to do. Um, you know, um, do we? You know, unless we go down there with our own defense. Can we simulate what we're going to see? No, um, but we'll take periods of practice where we do that. You know, inside, when we're going against Kenny Wooten and we're going against Chris Stahl and we're going against Rashad Johnson, we're going to all of those guys. I, you know, I shouldn't have named them off. All of those guys, when we're going against our people, we'll simulate it at that time, but that's a 10-minute period. The rest of practice, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can at showing the looks. Um, and then it's more so about our guys offensively and defensively understanding how they need to practice and the urgency that they need to practice with to get themselves ready. You guys have been able to overcome slow starts. Uh, I know you and I have talked a lot about this after games. It's not necessarily a concern, but do you want to start slow against a team like Jacksonville State that can really put you behind the eight ball? No, no, I mean, um, you know, uh, Contrary to what that game showed last week, I, I scripted the first uh, the first two series. You know, on my call sheet, I have a game flow deal over to the left, and it's like the perfect series, you know, it's perfect 30-play series. Um, and I assure you, I did not script those to fail. I, I thought that those would be touchdowns, um, each, and, each and every one of those plays. Um, you know, so we always want to start fast. We want to go out and three and out them, and we want to go out and score on our first series. But at the end of the day, $100 bill is a $100 bill. Don't matter if it's dirty, doesn't matter if it's clean, doesn't matter if it's fresh off the print, doesn't matter if it's been in a thousand different pockets, um, in a thousand different places, you're excited to get a $100 bill. Um, a win is a win, and I'm excited to get a win. It don't matter if it's two to nothing, 62 to nothing, 62 to 61, a win is a win. Ice cream tastes just as sweet either way.